This is Michelle Sullivan reporting from Vancouver. I'm at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference where I spoke with Dr. Greg Jaika. You presented yesterday uh, a series of patients with mild cognitive impairment and unlike what we often hear about a 50% conversion rate to Alzheimer's dementia, you found a 23% reversion rate back to normal cognition. That's right. Uh, uh, the field of mild cognitive impairment is sometimes quite confused and we've come to accept in the popular press and even across the physicians that mild cognitive impairment represents a preclinical stage of Alzheimer's disease, but really it's a descriptive term, a descriptive term of early memory problems that are certainly are worrisome. They certainly are a red flag for a possible impending dementia, but the message really needs to be broadened. There are so many different causes for memory impairment in the aging population, and it's incredibly important that we look for these alternative causes so that we can better intervene and perhaps prevent uh, or revert. And what were some of the medical reasons that you found for some of this um, transient cognitive impairment? Right, so of the 41 patients out of 179 that showed a reversion to normal from a state of mild cognitive impairment, 30 of them were actually found to have a medical cause. And so I like to think that we were actually responsible for bringing them back from the edge, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Those medical causes are often quite varied. Uh, we see a large number of folks with simple vitamin deficiencies, vitamin B12. We often will pick up on hypothyroidism, low thyroid hormone, which is a very common aging condition, not always screened for in the general medical setting by a primary care physician unless memory complaints or other symptoms are brought to bear. Mm -hmm. We do find in the aging population, especially as age increases, uh, a large proportion of subjects who may experience memory and thinking decline related to vascular disease and vascular changes in the brain. And that really allows us, whether it's a vitamin deficiency, hypothyroidism, vascular changes, or other medical causes such as uncontrolled congestive heart failure or uncontrolled diabetes, it really allows us to intervene with appropriate medical care rather than simply relegate these folks to a diagnosis with its psychosocial as well as medical ramifications of an impending degenerative disease state that may not exist at all. Right, and you did have some folks that sort of flip-flopped from mm -hmm. MCI to normal cognition over their follow-up appointments, mm -hmm. and some of them eventually did tip over into Alzheimer's dementia. That's right, and, and I refer to these as bouncers. Uh, sometimes it, it, uh, the stage of mild cognitive impairment may represent the degenerative dementia, but actually through uh, cognitive reserve and through uh, uh, interventions, changes in lifestyle, we may be, and we are all, fighting off degenerative disease constantly. And so I think that these folks are, are on the edge and they're trying to hold off that degenerative process through compensatory mechanisms, mm -hmm. lifestyle changes, but eventually, as we know, degenerative disease processes overcome their relentless and their destruction of the brain. And eventually we hit a point where we can't compensate. Well, what is, what is your advice to primary care providers who probably are gonna be on the first line of, of seeing these people? Absolutely, and primary care providers are the, the front line. Uh, there's no way that specialists in neurology like myself can take care of all of the millions of people in the United States and across the globe that suffer from diseases like Alzheimer's. I think that uh, primary care docs are incredibly overworked and uh, they're dealing with so many symptom complexes that it's very easy when a memory problem is brought up in the history or in the examination to simply relegate those folks to a diagnosis of degenerative dementia mm -hmm. and treat the symptoms rather than looking for those underlying medical causes. Uh, in 
my field of work, when someone comes down with a degenerative disease like Alzheimer's, uh, universally that is a fatal incurable disease. It's, it's rare for many to actually save someone with memory problems. And so I take great pride, and I'm sure that primary care physicians would as well, of restoring those cognitive abilities and functional decline by simply following a, 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 almost a, a cookbook recipe for doctors. The American Academy of Neurology has a, 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 a protocol, a practice parameter that states that if memory problems arise, we should look for thyroid problems. Mm -hmm. We should screen for depression. We should look for vitamin B12 deficiency. We should obtain brain imaging to ensure that we're not dealing with vascular lesions or other problems that are common in the elderly. Mm -hmm. And then we'll truly all be working together. And if we could reduce the burden of degenerative dementia, declining cognition and functional impairment in the elderly population by that 23%, that would have a tremendous impact yeah nationally and globally mm -hmm. on the burden that people suffer from with these sorts of cognitive difficulties. Thank you very much for sharing that. Wonderful, thank you for having me.